Today, we're putting the two camera rigs head to head, a $200 underwater action camera like the Osmo Action and putting it in comparison to a $5,000 underwater camera rig. Which one's better? Which one works better for you as the typical filmmaker? Let's say you're trying to get into underwater cinematography. Does the action camera hold up in comparison? I'm gonna show you guys the two key differences between these systems and really talk about the values of having something like an underwater camera case. So the first key difference that you're gonna notice is the, the price point. One is $5,000, the other one is $200. And let's say you're wanting to get into doing some more underwater stuff this summer. I would highly recommend just purchasing something like an action camera to really get your feet wet. See what I did there? For something at such a low price, you're really able to get a lot of bang for your buck. For example, the underwater action camera has a bunch of key features that the big $5,000 rig just doesn't. One is it's able to pick up audio, external audio from the scene and scenario that you're in. Now, while it's not the greatest, it is much, much better than what your camera case can capture. This, this big rig that I have on my SLR, while it looks amazing, the audio is complete garbage. It just sounds like you're you're listening to audio through two tin cans. So the action camera actually picks up stuff that's usable. The second thing I would say about an action camera is that it has internal stabilization that's really, really good. If you pick up any sort of action camera that's come out within the last three years, they have have these internal stabilizers that look like gimbal shots. So you're able to get these nice smooth shots going into the water, in the water, outside of the water with a lot of ease. When shooting on my other rig, I've really got to try and balance it and float the camera within the water to get smoother shots. But even then with waves splashing up, it just kind of bounces around a lot. Now, the other thing about an action camera is that you're able to just literally run around with it and put it into places that the bigger rig just won't fit. One is this camera can mount onto a surfboard. It can mount onto your wrist. You could put it on a carrier pigeon. This rig literally can fit anywhere. That's why people use these. So the bigger rig, while yet it has all of these other features that I will talk about very soon, the, the tiny action camera, as far as like fitting into your bag, pocket, just being able to pull out and shoot right away is much easier. That being said, you're still watching this because you're like, Zach, there's still like a bunch of time left in the video you're probably gonna talk about this bigger rig. And yes, I am, and how much I love it, and why it is so good. So this is the underwater rig that I use. This is the Sea Frogs um, A7 III casing. It basically turns my A7 III into a GoPro, a massive GoPro. And so while your, your little action camera, be that a GoPro, Osmo, whatever, uh, has all of those features that I talked about, let's dive into what makes this camera so useful. And first thing is you're just able to capture higher quality images. Obviously your Sony a7 III, a7S, or whatever your SLR that can fit within this case shoots at higher resolution. You have a much better diversity. You have much better diversity of as far as frame rates go, resolution. And one of the big reasons why I picked up this guy was for the still photography. These rigs are designed for taking photos and videos underwater. The functions on it. While these action cameras are great to take a photo on an action camera, you've got to go into menu settings, use the touch screen while your fingers are all wet, and therefore having a very janky type setup when capturing anything in the moment. This is very tactile. There are clickable buttons that are everywhere. And what they've done, what the company Sea Frogs did with their cases is they have button spots. Now, while you'll see a lot of available options on Amazon for around 50 to $100, which are these bag setups, why I spent the extra $800 on this setup is because the buttons on it really make it easy for when you're underwater or in the water. I find that the setups, usually when I'm shooting something in the water, it's gonna be relatively <laughs> intense. I'm gonna be, out there surfing in the ocean or in an ice hole or 30 feet underwater scuba diving. All of the scenarios to which where I bring this, I don't wanna go through the, the time of trying to figure out and fiddle around with my gear. I need it to work right then and there. So one of the big things that this rig has is if we open it up, there's a sensor on the inside. So if something touches it like water, right away, like there's been so many scenarios where I've like half put this on and this annoying beep goes off and I'm like, oh my God, I gotta get out of 
Now let's get into the big meat and potatoes of this, which is why you should actually be switching over to these bigger rigs if you are doing underwater shoots a lot, or perhaps this is something that interests you. And the number one reason is lenses, your lens choices. The big difference between a GoPro and an SLR is the interchangeable lenses that you can put on it. As of yet, GoPro has not created good options to switch lenses. Yes, it can crop into the sensor and do different scale-ins, but as far as an SLR, there is a huge leap for that for that company to make. So let's migrate over and talk about focal lengths underwater, which is probably the best part about this setup. Pro tip about underwater cinematography is that the visuals will be distorted. The water acts as some sort of magnification that changes your focal length. I find that it punches in the shot around 20%. So just sort of have that in the back of your mind. So whenever I'm working on a 16 millimeter, it kind of punches it into about a 20 to 35. If I put it onto a 35 millimeter, it crops it into about a 40 or 50 and so on and so forth. Forth. Now that's when you're underwater. Obviously when you pop back up out of the water, it goes back to its regular um, focal length. And then when you do sort of the half in, half out, it looks super neat. That way I can capture these nice, beautiful wide shots and still get a bit of distortion, which then punches me into about a 20 millimeter or 35 millimeter. But let's be honest, wide angle lenses you can get on these guys. That's not why I bought this. So where these rigs get really fun is when you pop on something like a 50 millimeter prime or an 85 millimeter. The 50 millimeter is one of my favorite underwater focal lengths because it just looks different. You're able to punch in and see a lot more details that you wouldn't typically see on a wider lens. And again, we're very used to seeing underwater shots done on GoPro. So that already we've sort of become desensitized to. But once you pop on these cinematic lenses, these prime lenses with a bit of a prime focal length, all of a sudden it gives it that movie quality. You're also able to punch into details that maybe you can swim to, maybe you see a fish, perhaps there's certain think floating particles that just look better with depth in them. I found that when I was shooting at 120 frames per second underwater for the 35 or to a 50 millimeter focal length, I'm able to get depth within my shot. And with water particles, floating algae, stuff like that, it just looks really great. You're also able to just see underwater sea life a lot better with that distortion. And with this setup, then you're able to just take your, your comfort zone lenses, the ones that you love shooting on, and put them in the water, which then just gives the project the quality to which you're used to working on. I find that if I have to switch over to a GoPro, I'm really trying to push this to its max. That was no, for those of you camera enthusiasts, this is the GoPro Max. It, there's just there's, there's just certain a barrier to entry to cinematic stuff. And even with filters and slow motion applied and stabilization, it just can only do as much as it can do. The GoPros can only go so far. With this though, what I like to do is actually pop on telephoto lenses. So I have an 85 millimeter, which was one of my favorite focal lengths to use with this. I took it out surfing in the ocean for stills and video. You're able to capture distant shots that are otherwise very complicated to get with, let's say, a GoPro. When I'm filming my friends surf with this little rig, I have to swim as close up to the person as possible and like try and not get in their way as they're you know crushing a very small wave. With this, I can be from a distance and get the shot that I'm wanting. And with a little bit of that water distortion, it's able to punch in a little bit closer. Again, you can't attach this to a surfboard, but you can get the shot of the surfboard just as clear from a distance. It also creates that nice focal length, that visual distortion that we all love within those telephoto lenses. And it's just freaking fun. It's so fun to capture. So for those of you who perhaps purchased something like one of these cases and want to sort of know the best focal lengths to shoot from, I would say that Go with what the story is asking for. For example, if I'm filming surfing, I'll probably be shooting on a longer lens because I'll be distant from the subject and therefore I can get the kind of shot that I'm wanting while still kind of keeping a safe distance from the action. If I'm shooting, let's say, underwater scuba diving stuff, I'm gonna be wanting to film on a bit of a wider focal length, something like a 20 mil or 35 mil, because I wanna capture the big, wide, expansive things like underwater shipwrecks, the sun flares peeking in through the shot. And then where something like a 50 millimeter type sits in is to capture more movie-esque type scenes. Maybe you're not too distant, but you're able to stay nice and close. I was able to film a couple of cool short films on my own with that 50 millimeter half in and out of the water. These things float in the water, so to shoot like, you know, selfie type movies, I would just let this bob up and down in the water and be like, okay, well, let's see what it captures. And it, and it captures some cool stuff. So verdict at the end of the video. Action cameras, great for beginner filmmaking and for dipping your toes into the underwater shooting scene. 
these things by far are my favorite summertime and wintertime tools. Since I shoot a lot of underwater stuff, this has been one of the greatest investments that I've made within the last year. Shooting stuff underwater has been one of my favorite things that I've started exploring within the last year, from scuba diving, portrait shoots, holding my breath, and even just shooting surfing stuff. So if this is something that interests you or fascinates you, let me know. You can shoot me a message through Instagram and I'll answer that if let's say I didn't answer whatever questions that you've had while watching this video. Anyways, folks, thanks for watching. Keep making some great stuff and uh, check out Premium Beat, the beat blog post that's attached to this as well. If you want to check out the music and tracks that were in this, or just you didn't have your pen and paper down, all the info is provided in the link below. I'll see you guys later. Keep making some great stuff.